GM and welcome back to the channel. In this video, taking a look at SSV network, that is secret shared validator network. This is a critical piece of Ethereum infrastructure that not too many people know about. The chart has been on a bit of a madness over the last few months. And as we go into a post Shanghai era for Ethereum with staking firmly on the menu, this is gonna have even more importance for the future security and decentralization of the ETH network. So I'm gonna try and break this one down. It is quite meaty, so we'll try and keep it as high level as possible in this video and really give you the TLDR on what this is about. If you enjoy this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So let's start off with some basics here. I'm very bullish on the Ethereum staking narrative and the potential for many of the market caps of ETH staking derivatives and also infrastructure behind this to do some multiples in the upcoming cycle, as I believe that Ethereum staking will be the main use case of ETH in the future. And that's what people are gonna be buying and hoarding their ETH for to stake it to get passive yields. Currently SSV market cap $275 million. You can see 7 million tokens currently circulating. The total supply is just over 11 mil. So somewhere in the region of 60 odd percent are circulating right now. What does it do? So SSV or secret shared validator, as I mentioned, it is essentially the same as DVT, which is distributed validator technology. So this provides an open and simple infrastructure for splitting and distributing a validator key into multiple key shares for the purpose of running an Ethereum validator across multiple non-trusting nodes. So rather than the reliance on one node operator, you actually split this amongst multiple non-trusting nodes. They each get a key share, and this helps for security and decentralization reasons. Then in the blue, to explain this a little bit further, in order for a validator to earn ETH rewards, it must be online and signing transactions. So in the current Ethereum staking ecosystem, due to strict protocol rules, a validator must run on one node only, and this presents a single point of failure. By splitting the validator key into multiple key shares and distributing these key shares to multiple nodes, if one goes offline for routine maintenance or it blows up or whatever, fault tolerance is achieved and the other nodes holding the rest of the key shares will respond to keep the validator operating. This results in a slashing free decentralized staking environment. So this is an improvement on the as is basis right now. And this is highly likely to be the technology that many staking services adopt as we go forward post Shanghai. This will go live on mainnet sometime in 2023. So I will be keeping out a very BDI for when this does go fully live on mainnet. Now this is so important that even Vitalik has it down on his roadmap for ETH. So his kind of ETH2 or whatever you want to call it at this point. The roadmap here he says in the diagram for the Ethereum protocol development, this is what's coming and in what order. So around the merge, which was the movement to proof of stake on the beacon chain, he shows us that once the post merge withdrawals are enabled, i.e. Shanghai upgrade has happened, we're going to move from distributed validators being just in demo mode to being in full deployment mode. So even on the Ethereum roadmap, it's showing us here security and decentralization will be the pillars propped up here by SSV type networks. So here is the website SSV.network, distributed validator infrastructure for developers. This is not somewhere you actually stake with, but it's the infrastructure, the kind of back rails you can stake along. So operators will use this and then you can use those operators services on the SSV network. I do expect this network to continue growing over the course of the years to come and it to be one of those dark horses in the crypto races into 2024 halving and beyond. So here we can see who would actually be using this, staking pools, services, or if you've got 32 ETH, you can do solo staking utilizing the SSV network of node operators. These are use cases yet to be achieved, DAOs, institutional staking, and bridges. So if that is a bit of a mouthful, we'll go straight to the horse's mouth here. This is Alan. He is one of the co-founders of SSV. They've also got some ties to the Ethereum Foundation. DVT actually came about as a proposal from the Ethereum Foundation itself. So this is a core component of ETH. And in this first clip, he's going to describe to you exactly how staking operates right about now. Think the providers you may use, Rocket Pool, Lido, etc., prior to SSV. This is basically how Ethereum staking infrastructure works today. Uh, it's very similar and very common between DIY stakers at home all the way to the big institutional ones. There's a bunch of validator uh, keys. Those keys are 
private keys and public keys, which uh, allows you to sign and earn rewards as a validator. You put them all into a piece of software called a validator client. That validator client needs to be connected to a beacon uh, node, and together they work, execute duties, get you rewarded. Uh, that's basically the, uh, the infrastructure everyone is using. This infrastructure is very limited. So first of all, the key needs to be 24-7 online all the time, obviously because it needs to sign. You cannot run um, multiple copies of that key in multiple instances of a validator client for backup, for robustness, because you'll get slashed. It's very dangerous to do so. That's one of the reasons why it's so hard to build robust infrastructure. And it's complicated to build infrastructure, which means there's very, very few operators that do so. Uh, so there's very few operators in this industry right now. SSV is one and Obol Network is another. Obol Network does not have a token as of yet. So this kind of has a first mover advantage in the space. And he's showing you there, there's some limitations to the way that ETH staking is currently going on. Multiple central points of failure. If you have huge centralization of staking services as well and keys get compromised, this is very bad for the network overall. There's lots of slashing risks as well if the node operators go offline. So it would be better to split between say four operators operators rather than just having one. And the fact the keys have to be online 24 seven as well, of course, comes with its own challenges. So this is the way that SSV operates. It's gonna kind of go through how it works and then some of the benefits of this as well compared to the status quo that we just heard about. The idea behind it is to be able to take an Ethereum validator, split it into independent operators, and that way achieve robustness, fault tolerance, uh, decentralization, and so on and so forth. That's really kind of a big, big shift we're trying to push and a big, big change in thinking because going forward, we need those things. And it looks something like this. And so we still have validator keys, that's fine. But in the middle, something changed. Instead of having a single point of failure uh, sits uh, somewhere in your data center, all of, all of a sudden you have a multiple of them. Uh, each one of them is a completely independent node uh, running somewhere uh, by an completely independent operator in different states, in different countries, running on different data centers, different uh, tech stacks, and so on and so forth. They work together via the SSV protocol. They coordinate, and they're able to sign duties for the validators, execute them, earn your rewards, and so on and so forth. The big benefit is, of course, that it's no longer centralized. If one of them fails, nothing happens. You can continue uh, earning rewards. If one of them fails, your validator is not compromised anymore. Uh, that's a, a big, big change in the way um, validation works and infrastructure works. It uses two main technologies, threshold signatures and a BFT protocol, which basically means a consensus protocol. And together they achieve uh, what I just explained. Uh, and for the kind of the more technical uh, between you, um, this is kind of a high, very high level uh, scheme of how it works. So uh, a new duty for the validator comes in, a duty is, is uh, kind of a responsibility the validator needs to do within the Bitcoin chain network. Um, one of those nodes um, starts the duty, uh, offers to the others something to sign on. They then go and decide on what to sign, if that something is valid, if that something is not slashable, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And once they do that and decide what, th what they want to sign, uh, each one of them signs with their own key share. Um, construct a signature, send it to the Bitcoin chain, and all this good, you're earning money. Uh, the big thing is by, doing, by using a consensus protocol, we have fault tolerance. Fault tolerance means that if one of those, one or more of those nodes gets compromised, uh, offline maybe gets hacked, uh, for whatever reason, the rest of them can continue working seamlessly. And that's a big, big improvement. So so I think one of the main benefits for that, especially with the current context that we see, we hear about Lido, there was some FUD around them recently. They're based in the US, are the SEC after them, that kind of thing. So if you use the SSV stack, you maybe have them as one of the operators, yeah? But if they do go offline for whatever untold circumstance, you're still gonna be getting rewards. You don't have a single point of failure, an issue around getting slashed on your rewards because they've gone offline due to a regulatory problem with the SEC, that kind of stuff. And so what you could do is select a load of node operators across different geolocations, maybe one in the US, maybe one in Europe, one in Australia, etc. Enhance overall decentralization, enhance overall security, and also protect the underlying profit that you're expecting.
So other benefits for this, you can keep the validator private key in cold storage. It doesn't have to be online at that point. Decentralization and fault tolerance will be inbuilt. And this is infrastructure ready to use for other future staking services. There will be more staking services coming out. We're just seeing the start of this race. There's only what, maybe 12 viable players out in the market right now. That's of course going to grow massively over the coming years. New takes, new ways of doing things, maybe better ways of doing things. And they can leverage the SSV network and that infrastructure stack, which could therefore mean more value accrual to this network. Think of it as layer zero infrastructure with others building on top of it. So the following thread from CC2 Ventures here, we're going to pick this up halfway through because the initial part was essentially what we've gone through already. But he says this, SSV has the first implementation of DVT and therefore it's positioned as ETH's security layer with first mover advantage. And with each validator that uses this DVT, the Ethereum network becomes more decentralized and more secure. So the use case behind this is absolutely massive. And if we think about what's coming for Ethereum as well, Eigenlayer, if you know about that, that is restaking. While DVT and the likes of the SSV network will have to be a core component to maintain the decentralization of the network if these types of new use cases are to take off. Tokenomics wise, it is first and foremost a governance token and it governs a large DAO treasury. But secondly, it is used as a payment tool as well on the network. So it is the go to currency that stakers actually pay to the node operators there so there will be a circular economy of ssv going from those who stake to those who provide the operating services so it is a means of payment you can see this within the tokenomic section on their docs payments and governance one and two stakers using ssv network will pay the operators using ssv and a percentage of the fees collected will be allocated to the dow treasury and then the bottom highlight it will be a for-profit dow i do like that a stable and well-funded treasury will allow the DAO to expedite development efforts, allocate grants, and engage in revenue sharing schemes for DAO members. So potentially this could be, you know, a staking token with some value accrual, with some revenue attributed to it, maybe some real yield there. This is therefore a nice flywheel. DVT usage accelerates the decentralization of ETH. This means more fees to the DAO. More projects then will get funded to build on top of SSV and use DVT to build their applications. And as usage increases, more fees and the loop starts again. And just to show you how well funded this is, they recently launched in January a $50 million ecosystem fund to help developers come and build on top of their network and utilize DVT within their stack. So it is well funded that treasury will have that kind of flywheel. And as it says here, the fund is solely dedicated to backing DVT use cases in support of Ethereum's long-term decentralization efforts. So a core thesis around Ethereum decentralization security, this really is hitting those major buzzwords. We're also seeing the largest staking derivative of ETH, ST ETH of Lido. They've been doing tests here with SSV network. This was around February time. DVT is a core component of Lido's strategy to expand the number of independent node operators participating in the protocol. There's been a lot of heat on Lido around centralization. This is one of the ways they want to try and decentralize their stack, leveraging SSV. So this has currently happened over on the Gurley testnet, and we are awaiting their final final Findings, but I do expect we will have some form of announcement from Lido that they're going to be utilizing SSV. So if the biggest liquid staking provider uses SSV network, that's obviously a bullish catalyst. In terms of Ethereum's Shanghai upgrade, this is now around the second week of April. This was retweeted by Tim Bako, the man leading the charge for ETH staking. And so if you think about it after Shanghai, after the withdrawals can be made, this industry is gonna really be ticking up a notch and we're gonna see more and more ETH getting staked. And as that happens, the need for more decentralized and secure methods of staking Ethereum are going to be more and more prevalent. Enter SSV. So over on Binance, here is the daily chart, currently around 38, 39 bucks. Stairway to heaven type chart there. Topped out as BTC topped out, and then a bit of a pullback here, but dips are for buying for this one. And this is in my long-term HODL stack. And if you want to get your hands on some, Binance has the deepest liquidity for this token. And the referral link down below will get you 10% off your fees on Binance for life. So you may want to sign up for a fresh account with that link down below. Last but not least, just looking through the holders here, there's only around 2,700 holders currently, and the distribution 
distribution of tokens is very, very nice indeed. The top holder is Binance. So them facilitating both perps and spot trading eats up over 33% of the total circulating tokens there. And as you can go through this list, if you check out these addresses here over the last 15 days, these three wallets have been loaded with 500,000 tokens. I do believe this will be in advance of some form of partnership being announced with some big players. And if we go to their website down under ecosystem, Everstake is a huge staking service, Lido of course as well. And if we keep going back, Coinbase Ventures is on there as well. So a few candidates in my mind as to who that can be. And finally, if you look at their own DAO wallet here, they're holding a total of 366,000 SSV tokens. So they don't have an outrageous number of tokens themselves. Well-funded with almost $5 million in stable coins there, but they hold almost 40, 50 Ks worth of Lido as well. So I can imagine a firm partnership with Lido is definitely on the agenda for SSV. So I hope this has served as a good intro to SSV network, what it does and how it's going to try and improve things for Ethereum staking. As I mentioned, I'm very bullish on Ethereum staking. So infrastructure that's going to help further decentralize and further secure the network is definitely going to be a winner in my book and as this industry grows there will be value accrual as it is the payment method for the node operators so i hope you can see why i'm bullish on this one of course not financial advice do your own research but i'll see you in the next one peace